Hey, stat students, how you doing? This is our first video. It's an introduction to AP statistics. Now, in case you're wondering, what is statistics anyway? It's very simple. It's the study of data. Okay? There's data all around us. Uh, how do we make sense of this data? How do we make it meaningful to us? We use statistics. Now, the reason that data seem meaningful at all is because there's all these changes in the data, okay? If, if all of our measurements were exactly the same, they wouldn't be interesting at all. But they're not, okay? There's always variation. And so statistics, statistics can be thought of as the study of variation as well as the study of data. Now, um, let's get into a uh, 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 variation of, of what might I be talking about. Well, variation in populations. If I look out at the forest, the trees are all different heights. Uh, variation in measurements. If I look up at the stars and I track exactly where these stars are in the sky, well, I'm going to make little errors every once in a while. And if I look at, at how those errors fall, uh, that's actually how a lot of statistics got started, is by uh, doing a data analysis of the, measure, of the error measurements themselves. Um, and then sometimes there's variation due purely to chance. If I roll a die over and over and over, I'm going to get sometimes a six, sometimes a two, sometimes a three. If I flip a coin, I'll get different heads or tails. If I pick a card out of a deck, I'll get a different card each time. These are natural, uh, just uh, variations due purely to chance. So, two different types of statistics. You've got descriptive statistics and you've got inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is exactly what it sounds like, okay? It's also called data analysis. It's describing the stats, okay? You have all this data there. How do I possibly describe it and make sense out of it? Well, I do it two ways. I make summaries and I make illustrations. Uh, by summaries, what do I mean? Well, if I take the average, I've got a bunch of, uh, bunch of students in my classroom, all right? Let's say there's 50 students in here, and I'm wondering, uh, what's the average IQ of my student? Okay, that's one way of summarizing the data. Uh, I might also wonder, well, how, how big a, a, a variety of students do I have? The IQ might go from 60 to 140, as far as I know. I don't know. Um, so uh, so those, are, those are summaries. It's a way of sort of taking all these numbers and boiling them down to just a few numbers that I can wrap my brain around. Um, illustrations are actually a wonderful way of showing data, uh, whether it's a pie chart or a bar chart or a histogram or a box plot or a stem plot. Lots of different ways we can illustrate data. Now, this is where it gets interesting is when you look at inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is when you make inferences about a population when you only have a sample, when you only have data about a sample of that population. Now, what am I talking about? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's say I have, this is my map of the state of Texas. I'm not very good at drawing the state of Texas, but this is as good as I can do. Okay, and uh, I have residences here in the state of Texas. Here we all are. And I'm wondering, what's the average height of all the people in Texas? Well, that number does exist, okay? There is a number that is the average height of all the residents in Texas, and I'm going to give it the symbol mu. This is a Greek letter. It's the equivalent of an M. And, uh, and so I'm going, to, I'm going to say that that's the average height. We frequently use mu to stand for the population, the average of the population, because, like I said, it's a Greek M, and it stands for mean. All right? Now, can I do this? No, I can't do this. How am I going to go around to every single person who lives in Texas and, uh, and measure their height? That's, that's impossible. By the time I finish, some people that I measured would have died, and more people that I didn't measure would have been born. So it's just absolutely impossible to do. So what do you do? You measure some of the people. Let's measure um, these people, OK? I'll take that little sample right there, and I'll take the average height of those people, and I'll say, I think this sample can represent everybody in Texas. So what I get is this measurement right here, an X with a little line over it that we call X bar, and that's the average height of this sample of residents in Texas. Okay? So my sample is going to be representative of everyone, and I get this average, and what I say is this X bar, it's an estimate of mu. Now, how good an estimate is it? That's why we have inferential statistics, so we can tell, we can answer questions like that. Um, so, in summary, if you can measure the whole population, 
do so. Take a census. That's what a census is. Is when you measure everybody in the entire population or every every individual in the entire population. And that measurement is called a parameter. So a parameter describes the entire population. Uh, like mu, for instance, that's a parameter. If you can't possibly do that, so if you're doing something like measuring everybody, uh, measuring the height of everybody in Texas, or measure, well, most situations you can't take a, a, the entire population, you can't take the census. Then what you do is you take a sample, just a portion of it, now, how do I know that I didn't get a weird sample when I take that uh, measurement? There's actually strategies you can use to try to get as representative a sample as possible. So this measurement is called a statistic, like X bar. And the statistic is an estimate of the parameter. And that's what inferential statistics is. Okay? So that's what we're going to be doing in this class. Uh, specific topics we're going to look at, we're going to look at how to get good data. Then we're going to look at descriptive statistics, how do we, uh, how do we uh, summarize and how do we illustrate. Then we're going to look at some probability rules, because you've got to have some rules to play the game. And uh, that's actually my favorite part. And then we're going to finally look at inferential statistics. This is a year-long course, and this is what we're going to be doing in the spring semester. Okay? And that's what the, that's what the class is going to look like. All right. So, uh, if... Uh, so w once I once I take this uh, this stats class, I'm going to be able to answer some questions. Questions like, uh, let's say I survey 50 people and 40 of them say that they prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream. Well, if that's true, can I assume that most people in the whole world prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream, or is it likely that I that uh, about half the world loves vanilla, half the world loves chocolate, and I just happen to get a weird bunch of people? Hmm, I don't know. So that's when we would use our probability rules and we'd figure out just how likely that is. Uh, or we might also look at this question. If 10 men and 40 women apply for five openings at a company and all the candidates are equally qualified and only men are hired, that seems a little, a little wrong. Uh, is there evidence of gender discrimination going on here? Or perhaps actually there is a fairly good probability of that happening. Well, that's when you would use inferential statistics to try to figure out, do I sue them for a... Uh, for discrimination, or do I say, eh, these things happen? Uh, how about this one? If I survey 500 people and 48% that they, 48 say that they're going to vote in the next election, what does that mean? Okay, Does that mean exactly 48% is going to vote in the next election? Or does it mean like between 47 and 49, I might be 1% off? Or maybe like between 46 and 50%, I might be 2% off? Uh, what is that margin of error? Okay. The distance between what what I got and what it might be, and uh, and how certain can I be? Because I can never be 100 percent certain. How certain can I be that it's going to actually be within that margin of error? These are things that we're going to quantify very very specifically. All right. So uh, that's it for this video. The next video is going to be over sampling and bias to start to getting good data. So I will see you then.